In this video, we'll look at ways that you can control the filtering of an embedded ad hoc view inside your application by passing parameters and using input controls with Visualize.js. Let's start by looking at an example of how we create a filter inside this ad hoc view. Here we can set is one of and apply. In our code, we'll call out location underscore one because there's only one location to be set. Date has two values in its range, underscore one and underscore two. Let's look at how we can discover these parameter names in our code base and connect them to an open source leaflet map. In our visualize.js code, we can set a success property that will run a function when our ad hoc view loads. Here we want to view in the console barchart.data and the metadata that shows our input parameters. Let's refresh this page and have a look. Here we can see location underscore one, which is the parameter that we want to pass the location from the map to the ad hoc view. We also see date underscore two and date underscore one. Let's add a function that allows us to click on the marker of our map. Here we can pass the location name into the ad hoc view that we've created. Again, we can see location underscore one has been set to selected location. We've also set this ad hoc view to run each time a marker is clicked on our map and error handling in case something goes wrong. Now let's place some code for a leaflet map and notice for each of the elements that can be selected, we have our click on marker function. We'll also want to reference the CSS for leaflet along with the JavaScript as well that's associated with the leaflet open source mapping component. Now our leaflet map renders and by selecting each marker on the location, we can pass that parameter to our view. Now let's open the second part of our first module, which you can download from the link in the description below, viewing the JavaScript that controls the date range with our slider. In this case, the custom input control that we have in our application returns a min and max value that is in a JavaScript date format. For this set of values to work with our ad hoc view, we need to convert them into a standard ISO date format, which we do here in our format date function. In this way, we can convert even foreign parameters to power our ad hoc view. Now it's simply a matter of passing the dates into our ad hoc view using dot params and our date by month one and two filters within the visualize.js code structure. When we open the view, we now see that the date range slider successfully passes its values to the ad hoc view. And because we are working natively within the application's JavaScript, we can easily make changes to parameters on the fly. Now that we've seen how to pass parameters into the filters of our ad hoc views, Let's also look at how we can dynamically populate our input control values. To view this in more detail, let's open the JavaScript in our module two application. While we've already rendered our coffee list three ad hoc view with visualize.js, notice here that we can also call it to grab data values to populate input controls. By passing the control in our for each loop, we can step through each filter or control ID, passing both all available values as well as telling the application if that value is already selected. This can then be used to append to any one of your application's input controls. To view a simplified example of this, you can also view the dynamic input control values fiddle in our live API samples from the link in the description below. Here you can see everything from the rendering of a view, to the discovering of all parameter names, to the passing of the input control data and rendering each value in its current state, as well as running the ad hoc view with new parameters whenever the input control has been selected. In this way, you can provide your end users with fully customized control of their data within the context of your application. 